We are so pleased to be joined by one of the all-time greats when it comes to women's boxing. In fact, if there was a Mount Rushmore of the sport, <laughs> she might just be George Washington. We are so pleased to have the most decorated female, the most decorated Puerto Rican boxer of all time, the great Amanda Serrano. Amanda, thank you so much for joining us today on Boxcaster. No, thank you so much for this great opportunity to be on the show with you guys. Listen, your career has been so outstanding, and you knock out women like crazy. Your KO <laughs> ratio, you're almost like at 80%, and you're fighting two-minute rounds. That's almost unbelievable. I mean, how, how do you do it? I mean, obviously, you're tenacious, and you're fast, and everything like that, but you know, you watch you fight, and you've got the power that everybody says women boxers don't have, and you yes, prove them I wrong was, all the time. I was blessed with power. <laughs> Thank, thank God for the power that he, he gave me and just hard work and um, a great team behind me that, that, that tells me what to do and, and teaches me all the right stuff I need to know and just go out there and perform to my best ability. Now, of course, a, a lot has been made of the fact that 2018, you said, will be your final year in boxing and you're transitioning over to MMA. In fact, you've got your first fight set for April 13th in L.A. as part of a camp. Combat Estrella. Um, Combate Americas. <laughs> sorry, what was that? Combate Americas. Combate Americas. Okay. Yes. Uh, how, why did you make this transition right now? Why are you transitioning out of boxing? Well, I accomplished pretty much everything I done. I have in um, in boxing, and there's still no not the opportunities that you know women deserve, and the opportunities are great over in MMA. So I said, I'm still young. I'm young enough, 29 years old. So I figured, let me. Let me try it while I still have the energy and strength to go out there and, and try a new sport. So um, we decided, let's let's try it. Let's give it a try. And I had this great opportunity with um, Cobate Americas. You know, they, they reached out and they gave us a good a good offer. And I said, you know, it's, um, it's a great time. Let, let's try it. And we're doing great at it. How frustrating has it been the last few years waiting for that opportunity in boxing and not have it? handed to you not handed to you but not you weren't presented with the opportunity to succeed in the sport that must have been extremely frustrating for you of course it's frustrating because i dedicated 11 years of my life to the sport and then i nothing is coming back in return so you know um it's hard work it's, it's not easy it's not going nine to five you know this is you know i'm getting bruises every single day, blisters on my feet, running, strength and conditioning, getting punched in the head, you know, it's hard work. And, and for it not to go anywhere, it's pretty sad. But um, it's gotten better throughout the years, but it's still not there. And I'm hoping um, I can continue to open doors for young girls coming up in the sport so it can get better. So maybe when I'm retired, I can say I was a pioneer of the sport and I helped these young women um, succeed in, in the sport of female boxing. We're talking to, of course, the all-time great Amanda Serrano. She of the five world championships in five separate divisions, an yeah, all-time six-time five, division. six time five <laughs> division world champion, the most decorated Puerto Rican boxer of all time. Uh, Amanda, why is it that women in boxing haven't been given the opportunity to succeed? Where, Who is making that decision to not take even an initial leap of faith with you guys? I, I believe it has a lot to do with the TV networks and promoters. You know, I don't, I don't think they give us the opportunities to showcase our talent, to showcase that we, we do deserve to be on the stages with the other men. And um, so that doesn't give the fans an opportunity to see female boxing out there. You know, right now, the female boxing style has changed completely. You see two girls in there and they look like, like well-rounded men fighting. So, you know, and the fans are not able to see it if it's not put on TV, it's not put in their face. So they don't know what's going on with female boxing like, like it's with the men. You see men every single weekend or every other weekend, every month. You don't see the females out there, and that's what needs to be pushed a little more. Girls being on TV, girls being put in your face, so they, they know that they're, we're out here. Now, why has the MMA community been so keen on bringing women in and the boxing community so stuck in the prehistoric ages? Because they've been showing it. Like, UFC has done, done a great job with um, putting females like Ronda Rousey, Misha Tate, Holly Holmes, all these girls. There's con and in UFC fights, there's always a girl fight, either one or two or three maybe, 
girl fights. In boxing, you barely, like, when I fought on Showtime Extreme, it was over 10 years that a girl hasn't been um, put on TV. So, you know, that's like, people are like, wow, females fight? So there's constantly girls in, in MMA on TV being televised, and, and, you see, and you see it, and we put on excel, uh, exciting fights. It's so frustrating because I want to see the sport grow, but it can't grow yeah. if it's telling half the population, don't bother watching us. We don't respect your, we don't respect fighters that look like you, that talk like you, that you can relate to. Um, yes, yes. What, uh, you know, what was the fight out there that you haven't had the opportunity to fight that you would have loved to have had the chance to actually make happen? Um, I would love to fight a uh, Mexican, the, the Barbie, um, Ma was Juarez, mm -hmm. Mariana Juarez. You know, I would like to fight her. She's a decorated uh, um, Mexican fighter. You know, I, I would love to fight her or Marcela Acuna, Acuna. You know, that would be a great fight for me in the future. You know, with boxing right now, I just want meaningful fights. I, I don't want to take any, you know, right now it has to be worth going into boxing or, or having a boxing match. You know, I, I'm dedicating right now. Um, my pretty much my time in MMA because there's so much things I need to cover, so much ground that needs to be covered. I need to learn a lot more things in MMA. So I, I definitely want meaningful fights if I do um, return to boxing. Now, if a boxing promoter called you up and said, listen, we have a chance you could fight for another world title, are you at the point now in boxing that you can step back seamlessly and not have to you know, relearn stuff that you're probably already fairly solid on? Like, Can you almost seamlessly get back into boxing if the opportunity arose? Um, it, I mean, it depends on the fight because, you know, you have to train really hard. You have to have, you know, six to eight weeks of, of good, good training, um, uh, good training camp. So, you know, I'm not just, I don't take anybody for, for granted. You know, I train hard for all my fights. So I just don't want to, if this is like a two week notice, no, I'm not going to take, take the fight. But, um, I definitely would like to, um, eventually break my own record and be, be Coming a, a sixth division world champion, you know, if that opportunity comes along, that would be great. But you know, it, it's it's time consuming and it's not it's not easy. Yeah, I, I still know the basic punches and I know how to fight, but training hard and, and cardio and going out there and giving my all in boxing, it's I still need time. Let's talk about the weight divisions you've conquered. Of course, we're talking with the great Amanda Serrano here on Boxcaster. You went from 130 to 126 to 135, back to 126, 122, and then 118. You're getting smaller and smaller as your career progresses. <laughs> yeah, I haven't yeah, seen this. How tough has that been? Yeah, it's been, I mean, it hasn't been that tough. Like I said, I'm still in my 20s, so I, I can, it can happen. <laughs> it can happen still. But, you know, I have to go where the opportunities are. It's, you know, it's not easy for female boxers to get fights or to get these opportunities for these world championships. So I had to go where they were at, and that's the pattern it, it turned out to be. Different weight classes, different years, high, low, low, high. So um, it's you have to take what we can. So where would the sixth division be? Would it be at 115 or at 140? Uh, 140, probably. 140? Oh, my God. That's got to be a record. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're Manny Pacquiao if you do that, for crying out loud. Yeah, and maybe in the future, uh, we're thinking about 115. So uh, it's just it's in the back of our heads. <laughs> that's uh, that's crazy. But it is the life of the female boxer. You really do have to go yeah. all over the place. You can't just marry yourself to one division. You know, a fight that we've been talking about here on Boxcaster for some time, you and Jelena Mergenovich, I always thought would be a terrific yeah. fight. And I know that was yeah. there was talk about that, but it didn't actually end up happening how close yeah we actually wanted that fight uh when we was um when they had gave us the showtime extreme you know we wanted her to fight but she she said that she was not getting paid enough so i mean it was a great great opportunity at the time but you know she turned us down and, and you know times changed i mean her last fight was when she got a draw with um not not a known fighter and you know it's just i, I don't i don't believe it's it's like a little watered down now like i wanted her at her prime when she was out knocking girls out so it would have been a better fight and but right now i mean she's not at one of my top priorities oh got you um now let's talk about your relationship with heather hardy i know she obviously is going down the same route you've gone down yeah. have you gotten a chance to kind of learn from her experiences because she's two or fights two or three fights into her mma careers anything that you've you know checked off that you've seen her go through that you're like, okay, I've got to avoid this or work on that? 
um, to take my time and, and, you know, to stay in the gym and, and continue to learn. I, I don't want to rush things, but I've been doing it. I've been training for, for a pretty long time, um, undercover, knowing, you know, so that's, that's just kept in my mind. Um, not even just from, from her, from, from anybody, just, you know, take your time. Don't rush into things. And, you know, I just want to continue to work hard. And I believe we're, we're pretty much ready for, for anything that they're going to get put in front of us. So yeah, just time, time. <laughs> what has been the toughest adjustment for you as a world-class boxer, you know, uh, dipping your toe in the MMA waters? Patience, <laughs> patience and keeping my distance. That's, that's been hard because you know me as, as a boxer. I'm just to go, I want to just knock your head off. I go in there and, and just run right to you. But in MMA, you can't do that. You will be taken down. You get clinches and elbows and knees. There's new stuff in, in MMA than there is in boxing. So I have to learn how to um, keep myself patient and not run into anything crazy and just keep my distance. And when it comes, it comes. I can't overwhelm the girl like I do in boxing. Aren't you at a distinct disadvantage, though, as a boxer, as a world-renowned boxer going into MMA? Because everybody will know the one thing you won't want to do with this opponent is stand in front of them. You know, and, and then, too, but then the follow-up question is then do you know what you have to work on. So, obviously, you know, takedown defense is something you're probably yep. working on constantly. Is yes, it a blessing I, and a curse knowing that everyone knows what your strengths are? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's both because um, knowing what the opponent's thinking and their team is thinking, so I've pretty much just been mastering my takedown defense. I don't want to be taken down, so I just – that's in my, the back of my head. Don't want to be taken down, so I'm pretty much mastering my takedown defense. And then in striking, I've been seeing a lot of fights where these girls, if they're going up against a striker, they want to some, – some type of reason, they want to show that they can strike too, so they stay up and striking. So I said, that's good enough for me. I mean, if the opponent and their team is really smart, then they'll definitely take me down. But – then I have my takedown defense, and then right back up to if I'm if I am taken down, I'm getting right back up and right back to striking. So I mean, hopefully, if you can get past my strike to four ounce gloves, then I got something. <laughs> I got something for you too. <laughs> <laughs> what? So what's the plan B? Like, okay, so obviously striking is your weapon A of choice. So yes. if it goes down another path, where is there another aspect of MMA where you're like, okay, no, I could I can handle this. This is a good plan B for me. Um, well, like I said, the, the takedown defense, and we're we working really hard and uh, defending, you know, anything on the ground and, and just getting right back up. Um, I, I want to keep everything on my feet. I mean, of course, that will be in a perfect world. I will stay on my feet for all three rounds. But, you know, if it does take it down to the ground, I have, you know, great defense, and we're working hard as, on that as well. And, yeah, escapes, my escapes, and, and just defending on, on – on the take on the submissions and on the holds, ground and pound and all that stuff. We're working hard on that stuff because we know that's where that's where they're gonna want to take me because I'm a striker. Now, of uh, course, talking with the great Amanda Serrano here on Boxcaster. Amanda, uh, as being the most decorated Bariqua of all time. <laughs> I mean, you say that and it, it's true. Is it almost weird to hear when you consider? the fighting heritage of Puerto Rico, but you are literally the most decorated Puerto Rican boxer of all time. Yeah, it's so funny because every time you've been saying, you said it like three or four times and I just laugh because to myself, I still feel like I'm just an average girl <laughs> from, you know, from the block. Uh, but when you say it, it's like, wow, you know, I really appreciate that and I'm just honored to hear that. And yeah, just to be um up there with, the Puerto Rican greats, I'm just truly honored. I, I still don't see myself or, or feel like I am up there with them, but I'm pretty much, I guess I am. And, you know, I just, I love my island and I love the athletes and the people of my island. So it's just a great feeling to, to have that. How are things going in Puerto Rico after the hurricane? Are things getting back uh, back to life there slowly? Yeah, they're getting slowly, slowly, but everything's getting back um, together. My family, thank God, they they're all good. My publicist, um, he's doing great, and he's still working hard for me, and I, I appreciate that with, with everything I have. Now, uh, what I have to ask you about Puerto Rico? It's a small island. The population, yeah. it's you know, you, it's not the most populous place in the world. However. It's a fighter factory. What about Puerto Rico keeps producing great fighters after great fighters after great fighters? 
Well, we're small in size, but we're humongous in heart and determination. You know, we go out and we just give it our all. I think it's the the sazon and the in the in the food that that gives us some type of energy. But we all have big hearts, even when we're down and out. We, you know, we're giving our all and we're trying. And and you know, the the Hurricane Maria, they she came, but you know, she didn't. Um, kill us and we're coming back bigger and stronger and just like all the fighters and all the athletes that come out of Puerto Rico it's so it's amazing how many athletes we we have and, and how much heart dedication determination that we have and you know I'm just so proud to be a Boricua. Now aside from um, aside from yourself and you don't seem like the type of person that would toot your own horn but who yeah. is who is the Puerto Rican fighter out there let's talk about boxing that people should keep their eye on right now. Oh, well, I'm really, really interested in um, the um, Pitufo, which is uh, what's his, um, Christopher Diaz. Christopher Diaz, Manny, yes. Manny, what's his name? Rodriguez. Manny Rodriguez, yes, yes. yes. He's an up-and-coming fi- a fighter that, you know, he surprises all of us <laughs> at, at times. And, yeah, there's, there's a couple of them. El Explosivo. Up. Yeah, yeah. There's what's that? El, El Explosivo, the guy who beat, just beat the Corrales. Machado, um, Machado, Machado, yes, Machado, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, who's that? <laughs> yeah, Machado too. Then we also have Mick Williams, Arroyo. Arroyo, yeah, yeah he looked great. Yeah, yeah Acosta. So it's great. We, at one time, it's so funny because at one time, um, me and my sister were the only female, I, we were the only champions, period, world champions from Puerto Rico. And we, me and my sister, my sister, we were holding that torch for Puerto Rico. And then now all these guys, they, they won the last couple, in the last couple of months, they won. So I'm like, okay, now I feel a little relieved. There's not so much pressure on us anymore. <laughs> well, now we you have can, the other ones. Well, now you're going to be carrying it in the MMA octagon now. Yes, yes, that's that's an exciting venture for me as well. You know, I've done great stuff for my island in boxing, so I hope I can, you know, move it over to to MMA as well. I hope they can be proud of me, and I hope I can um, become a champion, an MMA champion for them. And eventually, I mean, in the future, we do want to become also two-division world champion in MMA as well. So, you know, I just want to continue to break barriers, um, break records, and just do good by for my team and for my island. Now, just quickly, what's the future of female boxing? Obviously, Clarissa Shields is fighting on Showtime now, and she seems to be getting the platform that a lot of women should have gotten previous. But yes. do you think at least you're in good hands as far as Showtime and the way they're treating her going forward? Definitely. You know, um, who better than Clarissa Shields, two-time Olympic gold medalist, to, um, you know, to hand the torch over to I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that I've, you know, I've handed the torch over to her, but, you know, she's a decorated amateur fighter and she's a hell of a pro fighter. And I'm so, you know, happy for her. And for all the young girls, I mean, all the Olympic girls that are coming in and doing good for the sport and showing that, you know, we can fight. You know, I'm happy for them. If it wasn't for me, I'm glad they they doing um, a hell of a job and just showing that we deserve to be up there and show that we have talent as well. Would you like to have been able to have gotten your hands on, though, one of these Olympic hot shots to kind of, stand up for the older guard that didn't get that Olympic push to say, hold on, the sport didn't exactly start eight years ago. It started I a lot before then. Yeah, I mean, it's a little frustrating for me too, you know, because I, when I was an amateur, there was no Olympics, so I didn't have the opportunity to go into the Olympics. So um, now that they're pushing all these Olympics, you know, into the pros and into TV network and stuff like that, you know, we've been here. There's other girls that have been there in the sport fighting our butts off to try to get that recognition. And now that they're coming in, um, they're being pushed a little more. But, you know, it, it's whatever. She, she's helping us. We're helping each other. It's a, it's a big sport. It's female boxing. So, you know, whatever little help that we can give each other, it's, you know, it's woman power. Well, <laughs> so we're, what can I say? we're so proud and honored to have you joined us here today. We wish you nothing but the best going forward in your MMA debut and whatever's left in the tank when it comes to the ring as well. Thank we you. are, uh, you are one of the true warriors of the sport yeah. for either side. And I, I've always been saying that, you know, when HBO takes a chance on male fighters, you know, like a Tavis, like a, like, like a, like a Tavis Farmer, Tevin yeah. Farmer, Tevin. Uh, that, yeah, that they missed the boat with you and that maybe, oh, you know, you. you get, you get at least one more crack at showing the world 
what you're capable to do. But thank you so much, Amanda. No, thank you so much. I appreciate all the stuff that you do. And just for putting female boxers out there and, and giving a face to the name. And, you know, I just hope that one day it, it blows off the hinges and I can they can at least mention me in a couple of articles or my name on TV a couple of times to say that I was one of the pioneers. And um, I kind of feel old right now. <laughs> well, no, I wasn't just not trying to be, in a, a, you know, an obituary or anything like that. But I know. I feel like, oh, my God, I'm like, wow, wait, I, mean, I don't want to. I mean, I'm still 29. I'm still going to be in the sport for a little bit longer. Uh, but I hope I can um, make a name in MMA like I did in boxing. And I just want to, you know, continue to break barriers for all females out there and in sports, entertainment, you know. Um, that's just, just what I do. I don't do it for myself. I do it for, you know, for females. <laughs> well, we're always in your quarter, Amanda. Best of luck. And thanks again so much for your time Thank today. You. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I appreciate right, a it. Pleasure. Have a good day. You too. Take care now. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It was awesome. Mm -hmm.